What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos is provide you some upcoming earnings, some events to help you get prepared for the week ahead. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily updates as well to get you prepared for the day or week ahead in this glorious market. So what has been going on uh, this past week? Uh, there's been a lot of... Um, there's been a couple of different events. Uh, again, something I've talked about, there, there isn't really a lot of forecasted um, events aside from uh, monetary policy and from core that we are getting this week. But um, when I came into this week, uh, again, I wasn't really expecting much. Uh, there is, however, uh, some important aspects to take away from this week. Uh, particularly, I believe it was on Tuesday, uh, there was a Golden Sachs conference, essentially all the, the big banks, they got together and had a little powwow and kind of tanked the market together because that's what they like to do. And uh, essentially talk about negative GDP growth, about Rocky Roads coming ahead uh, again before earnings. Uh, JPM also did another 2% uh, roll off of <laughs> roll of layoffs. And uh, there was a bunch of downgrades as well on the same day. So there was a lot going on. Kind of took the market down at the beginning of the week uh, and then uh, rallied towards Friday for the PPI only to um, show inflation is is creeping back up. Uh, now, when you want to talk about those particular numbers and that data set, uh, again, that's, you're going to have delayed, uh, delayed data on that set as well. Uh, as uh, you know, the wholesale numbers will see inflation. So essentially, the consumer is going to eat that cost. Uh, so you're going to see that sl slowly roll out as well. So does that mean in this core uh, on Tuesday, uh, are we going to see inflation creeping back up, which is a concern? Uh, now, aside from the, the rest of the, the rest of this past week, um, uh, Tesla rumors about a, a successor has been uh, coming up as of late a lot, uh, particularly about the Gigafactory in Texas. Uh, that um, that will be taken over by his successor. Uh, I think it's going to be a slow rollout. He did mention this a couple of months back. Uh, so when that announcement becomes official, uh, I can see the market selling off quite a bit, or Tesla in particular selling off quite a bit uh, before um, before they they essentially pivot and turn around. I think Tesla does need Tesla doesn't need Elon at this point in my opinion, and uh, I think they need a CEO that's going to be there full-time as opposed to part-time, especially with uh, Elon taking on Twitter. So uh, with that being said, um, you're coming into this week. It's going to be a very pivotal week. Uh, you have core on Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, now, there's a lot of what-if scenarios that can happen here, um, but to make it close to black and white is pretty much a thing to go. Uh, inflation needs to remain uh, steadily decreasing if you want any sort of rally to come of this. If you want things to fall in line, it needs to continue to gradually fall off. Uh, now, again, you got seasonal things uh, occurring as well, so that can affect inflation. Uh, but understanding well, the things I talk about here that inflation is, is affecting a lot of other different ways. When people are charging on their credit cards for basic necessities that shows you how bad things are uh I've, we've talked about the national savings rate here multiple times uh, the second lowest in in history being at 2.4 uh, especially coming off of a pandemic of 33.8 uh, <laughs> at one point uh and i kind of understand where people have soaked all that money the people have got uh tons of money coming in uh, to this year, did they buy a bunch of assets is the question. Um, and then ultimately understanding uh, at what point the, uh, are those all those ads, assets liquidated uh, to where, uh, you know, people, massive amounts of people are getting laid off and they're on severance packages. So when that severance package runs out, it's liquidate assets. When all those assets are dried up, you sell your home. And then uh, if your home uh, isn't liquidated, if you can't liquidate your home, uh, then what? Then you file bankruptcy, and then um, a lot of a lot of bad things happen at that point, right? So, uh, which are a lot of different things I've talked about. Uh, 
uh, Thursday in particular, I started really talking more in depth kind of on what was going on with the, the housing industry uh, in, in finding the trends in Nevada, in uh, California, right? A lot of people are moving out of California, so that demand in California for housing has come down in general, uh, just because it's extremely expensive in general. And so now that you got interest rates that are making it even more unaffordable, uh, people are leaving. So you're, you're having that destruction demand there. Uh, you're seeing a lot of destruction demand across the board. Uh, and again, a lot of the numbers you're seeing are uh, misleading into where we're currently going. Again, there's a bigger catalyst here that's getting ready to play out and waiting for the consumer to fold. Something I've been talking about, uh, again, inflation. Um, and this is if inflation essentially uh, stays in line, right? There's a gradual decrease in inflation. And now that's not the way deflation works. So you get pumps and you get dumps. And I think we're getting ready to get another spike in inflation, uh, which is going to cause panic. Uh, because that means that if we get anything back over a 7.7, um, and more so, I'm, I'm more concerned about us jumping back into eights. If we had all get back into eights, um, you're going to see the market, I think, really panic at that point because that's just going to mean the Fed is going to continue to throw another 75 point basis move on the table, uh, potentially even 100. Again, where we land, uh, if we go in mid eights or creeping back to nine, uh, obviously they're going to come in, I think, a straight 100 at that point. Um, if we stay roughly around 7.7, uh, maybe 50 point basis move is on the board. I could see that. It's a little bit lower. I can see a 50 point basis move. Um, and again, if it drops into the sixes, uh, I, I see it still being a 50. I don't see any scenario in which it's going to be a 25 a point basis move unless it's unless it's a lot. I'm talking like uh, two point percentages, which isn't going to happen on inflation. That just doesn't happen like that. So um, we could see, right? Anything is possible, but uh it's this round is just not i don't see that happening so with uh everything being said uh inflation is uh the core inflation tuesday is gonna be big but then you got monetary policy on wednesday which is gonna be strictly dictated off the core cpi uh, and then you have powell fielding questions at 2 30. so this week is going to be a lot of volatility in the week there's a lot of data throughout the week again, but what matters is the core and what matters is monetary policy and overall all things is Powell. And so uh, as you can see, if you haven't been paying attention here, uh, watch this, this is why I put these up. Uh, again, these are, uh, you can get these off of options. The options will tell you what essentially is being priced in. Uh, we were just sitting at 60 last week. So the market is trying to price in a huge move this week on the general index. Uh, but if you haven't noticed, this is why I try to keep the different industries up here because uh, Tesla, which is normally um, during weeks like this, has a high, um, it tries to price in a lot. And it's not really, I mean, it's just gone up two points uh, since last week. Uh, but BA in the banks have, have gone up quite a bit. Normally, it takes a lot for them to even move a one or two points uh, for stuff being priced in, and they're, they've jumped quite a bit. So the banks, JPM has moved up like a point. Uh, BA has moved up like two points. So value and financials, which have been essentially the strength of this year, are, are pricing in a lot. And that, uh, obviously, that says a lot because uh, when you're talking about the core, uh, the core is, is if it comes in uh, too high, right? Um, the banks could run, value could run. Um, essentially, anticipating that the the Fed are going to raise um, higher interest rates, um, but if they don't, uh, and it's um, which will also bring down the banks or bring down tech. So, if they raise interest rates higher, uh, tech will fall. Uh, essentially, your bank's value will run uh, in thesis. Um, in general, overall, you'll probably get some selling just because of the fact that uh, it's definitely not good uh, because we are seeing what is happening uh, and all the things I talk about on this channel are essentially because of uh, the rates at this point. I was never really concerned uh, with inflation uh to some extent, uh, realizing that uh, the rates uh, are ultimately what's going to do the damage and potentially cause uh, another 
cl- uh, crash or flash crash uh, potentially uh, in the in the near future. Again, it's just all uh, reliance on on where that consumer is at and and the data you're getting. Again, is very misleading. You don't really know what is what is truly going on. They could provide you some guidance, but um, again, when you're seeing the things that I talk about this channel with with credit cards and and people struggling to pay for rent and struggling to pay for food. Um, yes, of course, inflation is going to go down and everywhere else because nobody it does, it can't afford basic things. You have to also understand, too, something I talk about is, um, you know, when when you're in, in environments like this, uh, people were in, entertain themselves with the cheapest entertainment. And normally that's food and beverage. Right. So. Uh, Alcohol is another huge thing to be watching as well. Alcohol goes up uh, tremendously as well. Alcohol sales go up tremendously uh, during times like this as well. So uh, so uh, cheap entertainment is food. Uh, that's what we've always relied on. That's just human nature. And so you're seeing that. Uh, and so this is why the demand for uh, all these other, you know, um, entertainment travel and all these other things have come down because of that and and used cars and everything else so uh, and then the housing industry again is 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 very different uh what we're currently sitting at and understanding that um the the demand is is also being there's destruction demand there going obviously because of the rates increases obviously because people getting laid off people don't know what's going to happen in the future why would you buy a home if you're uncertain of your of your job at this moment um and and kind of where things are leading off so again they can come in at 50 point basis move that's fine they can come in at, uh, at another 25 point basis move you have to understand it's still going to cause problems it doesn't matter what they come in at it's still causing problems and that's what i'm trying to highlight more so as opposed to the inflation is that um these rates are continuing to uh have that destruction demand demand destruction in in ultimately hurting the consumer from from buying and so you don't have a demand if you don't have a demand you have no market and so uh, we're trying to stop from going into a deflation yes it's a very sensitive uh, double-edged sword that you play with but uh, this is the way the market works um, and so with everything going on be interesting to see what happens over the next couple months um, Particularly, again, after this week, I'll be focused strictly on earnings. Uh, we, we pure holiday mode after that point, and then we're going in earnings uh, December or January fifteenth, and um, starting off with banks and see what we what happens there and start unfolding what's what's truly going on uh, with these frontline uh, companies and, and seeing we've seen normalization already. A lot of these companies in general. Uh, been taken down 75 percent 80 percent uh a lot of the ones that didn't deserve to be where they're at uh with this uh, this forward pe being ridiculously high uh so again tuesday is going to very is going to dictate how the rest of the week will go uh as far as monetary policy and then with fed uh, again that whole what if scenario will change overnight after the core comes out on tuesday um so let's hope that it's it remains to come down. Uh, if it does start creeping back in the eights, it's going to be the primary focus again. And so just realize that that this is what I call it about dynamic uh, environments is that you have to be prepared. You have to be on your toes. You can't be one side or the other. Um, and again, it's all dictated on one report. And then that's going to dictate how Powell makes his next move. And then that dictates the market. That's just the current environment we're in. Normally, it's easier to tell. Uh, now, it's not. This is why the volatility, this is why we chop for days on end. Because uh, uh, institutions don't know where the market is going. Because, again, it's all dictated on inflation. It's all dictated about uh, where is inflation. Then the next, uh, again, setup is where is the Fed going from that point. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, that's pretty much what I got for this uh, and kind of the market sentiments. Again, a lot of the other different things I talk about, um, 
don't want to sound like dead record with the, with the credit cards. Again, all that information is there. There's nothing. Uh, you just have to know where to look. It's not hidden, uh, but it's not going to be headline news. Uh, never go off a of headline news. Never go off of a particular one report. Um, right? There are many economists all throughout this year that have been wrong and, and dead wrong badly. <laughs> so uh, not to say I mean, that my opinion is better than any other, but I'm, I'm saying what you need to do is build a thesis off of multiple opinions, off of specific data, um, and then build your confidence out of that. If you believe in that, then that's what you believe in and, and go with that gut feeling. Uh, if not, then, you know, uh, you will be you will be corrected, but understand this is where risk management comes in because we're not always going to be 100% either. No one is 100%. I'm not 100%, right? But this is where risk management comes in. Uh, and what's important during times like this, because there's still a chance we could drop another 20%, if not more. And then what happens at that point? Are you prepared for that is what I'm saying. So if you don't have proper risk management, then you are not prepared for that. And you have to be okay holding for five to 10 years if that's how long it takes uh, the market that you are in to turn. Uh, so, and hopefully it does turn because we never know. Nothing is 100%. You have to go into everything realizing it's not 100%. Um, risk management is everything. Uh, luck can only go so far before you run out and then stuff just folds. <laughs> that's why risk management is so big. Uh, so technical wise, let's look at what we got here. Aside from all this hot mess on the on the dailies and monthlies, uh, this is just one big essential blur at this point. Now uh, that we've been just essentially playing around for a couple of days here, almost this whole quarter we've been uh, just floating around this area. Again, waiting on monetary policy, kind of see how twenty twenty three is going to set up. Uh, so again, really watching this uh, the thirty nine hundred level. Right. And then essentially the 4100 level, uh, we try to break 4100. Again, if we do everything falls in line, I could see us heading back to 4100. It's not a pivot yet. Even if the even if inflation comes down a little bit, even if um, Powell, uh, the rates coming at 50 percent or 50 basis points, you have to understand that that is it's still not a pivot. It is going in the right direction, but it's not a full pivot yet. When they stop laying off you know, rate increases, then you're looking at a pivot. And that's still a couple of months down the road. And when that happens, uh, you're going to be uh, typically uh, you will get a correction at that point. So um, so we have to be very patient, see how this does play out. But if it does watching those two levels, if it does break that. Um, again, you don't want it creeping into the eights because this thing is going to start eyeing 3600 you start looking at the eights again so uh, so that's what we're kind of watching there uh, again you can the dollar itself is still looking bullish to an extent it, again bulls you want this thing to continue selling but you really want to watch that 102 again that 102 is a very strong uh 200 ema support so you're going to get a nice bounce off that and again something i always talk about with higher time frames too is that um When you start getting under the, this 200 EMA, uh, it doesn't last very long, typically on the higher time frames. And so this thing could uh, rightfully so start ripping back up pretty soon. And I think there's a lot of events that could make this thing uh, rip right back up just as quick as it started coming down. Again, you have to understand technicals, right? One event and then this thing is down quickly. Uh, so you can't. Uh, again, risk management comes in the in the place here, and so that uh, if it, it does break your technicals, you are out before you get massive moves. So, uh, and it's why I use the hourly candle uh, throughout the day because you see that move before you get these major flushes in the daily. Uh, because if you're holding up here and you get that retest, you can be out on that retest, and then the next hourly, then it starts to sell off. And you're not like selling down here. Oh, well, it broke and I want to be certain of it. Well, you could have saved yourself on the, on that break and retest here as opposed to just letting it sell off. I'm like, OK, well, I guess it's it's no longer relevant. So so nonetheless, um, again, 
have a plan before you get in any position, any investments is always a smart move there. Um, Tesla. Tesla, very interesting. Like I said, there's a lot of things going on. Again, Twitter has just been absolutely wrecking the stock. Uh, and now there are talks of, of changing, uh, having a new successor. Uh, again, could be a positive. Um, it wasn't initially, but then it kind of uh, technical-wise took over. And then, uh, again, a full-time CEO may be good. At this point, again, Elon or at this point, Tesla is essentially self-sufficient. It doesn't need Elon anymore. Uh, so I think it's a good stage for that transition to particularly happen. Will that happen uh, during earnings? Will we get that announcement? Uh, could, uh, but we have we definitely have to see. So well, that being said, uh, I do kind of, Tesla has been holding the 174 very well. Uh, again, this thing, I think it's going to start getting into earnings mode pretty soon as long as there isn't any news about Elon and successor between now and earnings. I think this thing could get a nice little rally. And again, if everything falls in line, if everything does fall in line, I think we could get a nice rally and start getting into that earnings mode. Uh, but again, things need to fall in line. Lower inflation, uh, essentially Fed coming in a 50-point basis move. That's what I mean by in line. Uh, so if we can get that, I think this thing could start uh, pumping back up. Uh, but we'll have to see. Apple, again, is one I'm going to keep recurring on this one. Again, safe haven. I really, if we do sell off, I really want it again around the 135. I think it would be a great entry, uh, but we have to see uh, how everything falls. Uh, once everything falls, then you can start looking at these positions and then make sure that it holds at the 135. Again, risk management, uh, buy in 135. If it breaks 135, you are out. You're not holding this thing down to 120. Um, again, not financial advice, but... Um, We'll have to see, and then hopefully, um, if everything does fall in line, I think we can go, get a nice rally. Like I said, this thing could potentially even pop back up to 155. Um, pivotal, not going to be pivotal. I think we need earnings. We need more things to fall in in general, and the general market sentiment needs to fall in line, uh, and the Fed needs to pivot, uh, stop rate increases before we actually see um, – see a actual full rally uh, a, a believable rally to the upside and potentially all-time high ba again this thing is, is just floating it's had some nice pushes but uh, i think it's again running out ba is essentially been the safe haven for value uh, even though they're losing money left and right um that doesn't matter because uh, it's essentially backed by the government so it really doesn't matter so uh with that being said uh, we'll have to see where it goes uh, from this point. So I think, again, if uh, we do get bad inflation, bad data, um, the uh, BA could start selling off. The banks will pro could potentially hold uh, just because they'll benefit in the end, or maybe everything will sell off again, uh, and then banks will lead back up uh, going into well, not this particular Q4 earnings, but maybe Q1 earnings uh, just because, again, they'll, they'll make out with – with the rate increases, we also understand with the rate increases, they're also losing business at the same time. So, um, so you might get uh, some whiplash there back and forth. JPM again holding. You want JPM to hold the 130. If it does break this, you got a pretty nice drop down to the 123. Uh, then potentially roughly around the 115. So kind of watching that on JPM. Uh, Golden Sachs again, same thing. It breaks this the 357, and you're looking roughly around the 324, and then down to the 285. That's what I'm watching. Uh, Bank of America, obviously, after they made uh, that comment, the CEO made that comment about uh, uh, negative uh, GDP. Then this thing just started tanking pretty heavy after that. But um, again, I think that this thing is going to be 29 by the end of the week, so we'll see how that goes there. But uh, that is pretty much it. I know I've already ranted quite a bit, um, stalled quite a bit uh, throughout this video. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that's what we're looking for this week. Going to be a big pivotal week. A lot of information, risk management. Again, I can't stress that enough. is is huge. Uh, don't be so biased one way that you can't see it going the other way. And then, um, you know, last thing I want is for someone to lose money in, in a market that is uh, very uncertain 
he was walking on eggshells. Um, and yeah, we'll see how things go. But um, again, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, but again, risk management is everything. Uh, cash is a position uh, until uh, until you can see clearly. This is why institutions sit out. In times like this, you sit out and you just wait and you be patient. The time will come, but you need to be patient. You need to be patient. You need to be able to survive what is currently going on. So, with all that being said, uh, I do appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.